I want to touch upon this. A bit of a sad bummer one to bring up, but I want to just touch upon it quickly. This is a video courtesy of Vogue, which features Virgil Abloh's closest collaborators pay tribute to his legacy. And I'm not really sure if this is in in response to it being maybe a year anniversary of his passing. I'm not really too sure, too tough. Or if this is something that they already plan to do um, just as a response to kind of his opening of the exhibition happening now at the moment, I think it's at the Chicago Museum or something. But regardless, it's a really touching tribute. And I think one of the things to kind of point out about his video that I really liked, oddly enough, is that I think some people were having, having some very n not nice things to say about Gigi Hadid. I think the other Hadid sister um, because she was quite bloated in the screenshot of the thumbnail of the image which is quite mad to see because you know you'd imagine after everything that's gone on with these celebrities online and us seeing them looking very different in their appearance and then later on finding out that they're battling these private flipping illnesses and diseases and stuff you'd imagine people would be a little bit more kinder and a little bit more um, charitable with people online but you know I guess it's the internet people can talk shit if they want to and it is what it is but one of the things I really appreciate about it is that people like Gigi Hadid legitimately looking like she was bawling her eyes out at the recording of this video just goes to show how much of an impact that man had on people who I don't think he could have really helped too tough you know what I mean if that makes sense I think it's one thing if he's like Virgil's he's like had a you had a you're sobbing because somebody like Virgil kind of reached back and kind of pulled you up because you were some kid, you know, just writing on t-shirts and he literally saw you and, and like the font that you used and wanted you to help out on some things you're doing with Off-White. I think it makes sense why you would be legitimately distraught because this is somebody who at his level shouldn't have been paying attention to you because he should be too busy. But because he's a pure internet kid at heart, he was online seeing stuff, noticed your comment, randomly touched your profile and then boom, here he's in contact with you. I get why you'd be bawling. But for somebody like a Gigi Hadid, who's like at the pinnacle of where she's at in terms of fashion, in terms of modeling, in terms of image creation, in terms of just being a muse, all that good stuff, there's not much Virgil can do for her really. Yes, he can help her out in terms of putting a, you know, showcasing her with off white, especially her and Bella, they do stuff together in terms of, you know, he seems to like those sisters quite a lot. But just in terms of um, career wise, not really much I think he can do for them. So the fact that she was balling that much just showed how much of a decent human being Virgil was as a person to these people and how much he touched them in a way that probably they haven't been touched when it comes to fashion and creative people at large because they're just, you know, it's all a little bit transactional in terms of the relationship, which is not a bad thing, but you know, the nature of the business. So I thought those two tributes were the best. So sorry, the, the, tribute, the tribute from Bella was the best. And I mean, Gigi, I said, right, Gigi. And then the other one I thought was the best, obviously from Den, Den Tears, who's another guy who kind of, you know, spoke. No, and, and then this guy too, actually, I got on the screen. I forgot his name. The guy that does all the cars and stuff. Um, I forgot his name again. Please forgive me. But I think these people, it, hopefully they have the list of people that they spoke to here. VP, da, da, da. Who did who they speak to? Did they got a list? Mm. No, I don't have a list of people who spoke to, did they? Damn it. Anyway, um, so they, in general, I think these are definitely some of the more touching tributes that everyone had to say about it, right? So I'm going to play a little bit of the clips now for you so you can see what I mean about this. But I think let's start with Gigi because I thought her comments were really, really touching as well regarding his legacy. One time in Paris, we're like, let's just get coffee. And right away, like, I just knew that he, I called these people like my star cluster, like someone that's like your soul friend. Um, and I just felt that so fast for him. Um, and yeah, I think right away, we were able to talk about so many random things that I couldn't talk to anyone else about, like miniature pottery and um, like, weird like felt artists and stuff like where all my friends wouldn't be interested like I could send it to V and he would find inspiration in it as well he could totally talk to anyone and find something that was interesting about them to him and that um, he found inspiring and I think he made a lot of people feel good about themselves and seen and heard that's actually a good line to say isn't it? that's actually a really really good line to say about him he made everybody see, feel seen and heard. Absolutely amazing. And then quickly gonna scroll through, show you the Den Tears um, tribute to. I thought he has some really good things to say about Virgil too. 
one second let me scroll ahead let me scroll ahead let me scroll ahead right, there we go here And by the way, everyone on this video looks like they've been absolutely bawling their eyes out. He looks like he's been either up for 17 days or he's been crying their eyes out. So I'm not sure if this was filmed right after the Off-White show, the last kind of one that he um, touched with his hand or the old Louis Vuitton, I'm not really too sure, but everyone looks like they've been super, super emotional going through this. So again, man, like it just goes to show a lot about you as a person and if after your passing, um, after all the clout tokens have been used up and the sympathy flipping likes online don't really matter anymore that people are still thinking and talking to you right in this way and I say it only because you know I've worked in this I've worked in this sort of industry in this field for a long time there were moments that I've had kind of my own little struggles in terms of dealing with certain people and personalities and how I can kind of maneuver and go through it to the point where I kind of stepped away for the most part and kind of ran away really and it's sort of facing up and kind of running at the problem but hey we all kind of have our battles to choose. But one thing I did notice is that there are some people in that scene who are like good, like genuine people, like genuinely good people who just happen to be into that field, right? And it's really surprising when you meet them because you're like, how did you stumble upon this clusterfuck of dickheads when you are just a nice, genuine human who just wants to put out good work and kind of inspire people and stuff? And um, it looks like Virgil was one of those guys. And again, I only met him briefly here and there. But for the most part, how they talk about him, the reverence they have with the guy, um, especially in his passing, goes to show how much of a decent guy he was. But I thought them tears' points here were really touching too. Like, um, you know, it's like the creation of the earth. So it like rain. Earth was all water. And then it was raining. And then the lightning kept hitting, hitting the water until the single cell organisms came out of the water. And that's same thing that I feel music for all of us is all this other stuff we do crawled out of that primordial goo that was just stimulated by music, 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 and then the record covers, you know, Capone and Ariega record cover, you know, so on and so forth, Mob Deep, keep going, I'm, I'm, I'm scratching the surface, you know, Camp Low, you know, like just like you can keep going and, um, yeah, I think all the style, the way we, it's because it started with right the music and then our style, and then us starting to make make things. You know, the music gave us the confidence to make things because the music, we saw the influence music and in our culture had on the whole world. So why can't we make things if we're the thing that we're they're drawing inspiration from? But then we can't go to these places or make things or have jobs here yet it's based on our dna our ip and that's what we would talk about a lot you know and then um then we stopped talking started doing but he's the first he's one of the first ones to start start doing out of our our tribe and was um enough inspiration for a hundred lifetimes yeah yeah and that's the main thing I think takeaway in terms of Virgil's legacy that I think I remember saying when I kind of made my tribute video and stuff is that I think the main thing to take away from it as kind of tragic as it was is that the guy packed a lot in in 41 years of life man a lot he did and especially if you think about it if you really kind of get really granular with it in terms of numbers it must have been like what maybe just under 20 years in terms of his creative output in terms of being on the front lines, putting stuff out in streetwear, in terms of fashion, in terms of communicating stuff with album covers, stage design, with soundscapes. It was probably maybe just under 20 years. He packed in so much from going from screen printing t-shirts and flipping, flipping rugby flannels for 1600 for whatever it may be, or $600, whatever it was, to then suddenly going to design for off Louis Vuitton. Because the off-white thing was just basically, I think, an extension of the, the thing he was already doing with the screen printing. Right? Even though it was obviously great to put on the runway, that's kind of something that I think a lot of people could, you know I'm saying, you could envision someone doing that, right? Starting a t-shirt brand and then wanting to then progress and take it to a Paris Fashion Week runway. I don't think anyone could envisage somebody taking a screen printing, you know, t-shirt and then suddenly being considered for a job like Louis Vuitton. Maybe a, a brand or a house that isn't very 
world regarded or isn't on its knees and is struggling and needs to be reawo re reawakened or whatnot and needs to you know come back into the cultural zeitgeist okay you can maybe envisage um some young street where kid basically getting that job but for someone to go from where he was to there was nuts especially when you think of his connection to kanye especially when you can think about back in those days too how people looked down upon street where it wasn't like how it was now where nowadays it feels like it's a lot more well regarded quote unquote kind of not so much but you know what i mean right so for him to go from there to there was absolutely insane but most of the reason why it happened was because the output was just crazy it was just undeniable i think that's one of the rare occasions i've seen something like that undeniable because sometimes you think i think to myself like oh there are people that say stuff like that right i'll become undeniable um make you know if your work is good enough someone will notice it but it's not always like that. It's not always easy as that because there's a lot of people out there who are talented, who are doing loads of great work every day, uploading stuff onto Instagram, uploading stuff onto their Flickr, you know, updating their vlogs, doing whatever, and no one gives a shit. Sometimes it's just luck. Sometimes it's just meeting the right person at the right time. All those things can also contribute. But there are also those occasions where somebody is just operating on such a high level regardless of what people are saying about their work because again let's think back to those times it wasn't like people were saying Virgil was like the second coming of flipping Carl Lagerfeld I mean if anything they were laughing at those comparisons they didn't actually get it they thought no this guy's absolutely trash he's only here because of hype bloody blah 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 but he just kept on producing which is even I would say more difficult to do than just producing and no one liking your stuff imagine you're putting stuff out and then people are leaving comments and telling you it's trash but you keep putting it out and then suddenly you end up at Louis Vuitton it's like whoa which I mean but most of it I think comes down to the he's relentless work ethic and I think I wouldn't surprise me that he was probably that kind of person who was like after so many dinners talking about how you know racist and no, talking about all the systemic racism at play in terms of fashion, in terms of streetwear, in terms of production, in terms of manufacturing. It wouldn't surprise me if he was one of those people that said, you know what, enough. Let's put our glasses down. Let's let's make a toast and say, or let's, you know, let, let's pour up and make a toast and say, look, tonight we decide this is the start of a new beginning. We're going to do everything in our power. We're going to use every single resource, every bit of consulting money, every bit of, um, you know, DJing gig fees we get. Whatever we do, we're going to pour it all back into our arts. We're not going to be buying anything. We're going to be pouring everything back into what we're going to be creating for the sole purpose of leaving our mark on a cultural timeline as Aaron Bond of all, let's just say, back in the day. And I think that's what he probably did to all of them. And it's no surprise that, again, the company you keep, that most people within these little vortex are super successful now it's no surprise everyone that comes around and touches it because it's imagine being around somebody like that who's operating at that level vibrating at that kind of vibration and also putting stuff out to, of that kind of quality being recognized for it selling out all these sort of things it's only going to rub off on you so that leaving that impression is incredible so i think those two examples are really great in terms of him as a person because you see that for someone like a Gigi Hadid she felt seen by Virgil, right? Even though she's one of the most seen people in the world in terms of her profile, one of the most famous models out there, probably one of the most well-paid ones. She, for the first time, felt seen by somebody in the industry who connected with them as a person, as a human, right? Um, and then on the other side, when it comes to Tremaine talking about him, he says, you know, like, the guy was one of a kind, right? In terms of understanding what the problem was, but also saying, hey, enough talking, let's get going let's get to working let's get the work done let's do the action and he proved to everybody that if you do stop talking and you do do more work eventually you will end up getting everything that you want absolutely insane and probably more do you know what i mean in terms of what he was able to achieve so um again really good tribute i really recommend you check it out obviously if you don't want to be emotional don't probably check it out but it definitely was a good touching tribute it's called um virgil abloh's closest collaborators pay tribute to his legacy courtesy of vogue check it out on youtube if you're that way inclined i really do implore you if you're a fan of his because i think it was really really good